Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Cheryl Blomstrom joins us. She's a political consultant and a financial expert. She's here for the whole show. We're going to pick a brain right here on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers Broadcast Headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always delighted to welcome back to the program Cheryl Blomstrom. She is a political consultant and our financial expert. <laughs> Pleasure to have you back here on the program. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not live up to that today. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I do want to uh, put out this disclaimer, which is um, that any uh, you know information that we put out on this program, if you wish to act on it, talk to your financial advisor. Do not take whatever we say as financial gospel. Hundred percent, absolutely true. All right, so you know there's so much going on. We're taping this on the morning of March 16th. Um, gas prices went up in terms of cost per barrel. They've come down a little bit in terms of cost per barrel, but we're certainly not seeing it at the gas pumps. Um, this affects not only tourism for Nevada, but it affects absolutely everything in the economy, right? Absolutely true, 100%. Um, everything we ship, every plane we get on, every train, boat, automobile, <laughs> yes. All right, so, so um, do you see any chance in the near future of gas prices coming down? I do. I think we'll see, um, for a couple of reasons, Right now, China is experiencing an, a, another bump in their COVID numbers. And when China has COVID, they close things down. And they've closed down a couple of provinces. So I think their gas demands are driving a little bit of that reduction. I don't think it's us right now driving that reduction, pun intended. Right. <laughs> but I think it's China that's driving that reduction. But I think we'll see a little bit of that um eventually it's got to steady up but i can't tell you when that is well you know the one of the other interesting things was to see the gaming stocks for macau uh, drop dramatically mm -hmm. uh, because once again they're basically going to be shut down even though singapore is starting to come back up again uh, because travel is allowed there now uh, but for macau their biggest markets are not able to get there exactly so um the, uh, the other thing that, that uh, plays into this is, you know, for so long we've seen the push towards green energy, renewables, um, all of a sudden uh, we're seeing somewhat of a, a bipartisan piece on Capitol Hill where things are moving towards the center rather than being on the extremes. Um, boy, Wouldn't that, is that be lovely? One, <laughs> it, it would be, except for the folks that say that when, you know, Congress agrees on things it costs everybody money. But <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, I think, and I have always been a proponent of an all of the above energy strategy. I don't think that there's not one silver bullet to fix it. We have to be serious in this state about talking about nuclear. If we're going to actually get to serious renewables, we need to talk about nuclear. We need to talk about different sorts of solar. We have wind, but we also have to talk about wires. How do we get it there? And what do we do in the meantime? You know, if we do all of these electric vehicles that we're talking about, that are not we, they are talking about, 
how do you charge them? We don't have the capacity for that right now in our, just in our baseload power. We don't have that capacity and we don't have any means to distribute it out to the people who need it. Well, isn't that an irony that uh, um, we've gotten so used to Amazon delivering things not only tomorrow, but the same day in some cases. Uh -huh. And yet when you see social policy and energy policy trying to change, um, it's gonna take decades, but people expect it to happen overnight. Yes, we have become um, very used to having things happen overnight. Um, I, I think there's a really good example of that in Ukraine right now. I think that Vladimir Putin expected to be overnight and it didn't work. And thank God it didn't work. Let's, let's go back, uh, because of the time gap between when we're taping this and airing it, I don't sure. want to spend too much time on talking about uh, the Ukraine situation Agreed. because it's so fluid. Um, Doug Cannon was on the program, the uh, CEO of MB <laughs> Energy, and I brought up nuclear and I said, you know, I is there a different name you can apply to it uh, to be able to make it more palatable to the American public? Right. And he talked about fusion and that being a way, you know, I, uh, I'm putting words into his mouth, but that being a way to be able to get nuclear power back into the mix of things. Absolutely, and the thing that I'm seeing, and I think you are as well, is the technology is evolving. It's not so, it's not so, cut and dried that you have to just plant half used f fuel rods in the ground in a hole in, you know, in Southern Nevada. That's not how it's going to work. And so there is, there is much more efficient use of those fuel rods. There's much more safe, if you will, means of using nuclear. There, fusion is a great example of that. And you look at California, they're, they're looking at uh, uh, shutting down San Onofro uh, down in Southern California mm -hmm. at a time when, as we looked at last summer, um, when the, there was a heat wave and California ran short of power, which rippled over to Nevada. Um, they are not ready for the things that politicians are promising when those politicians will not be in power. Uh, they will be long retired by the time the ramifications of those things occur. You are absolutely correct. And um, I don't look particularly to our state to the West, but for speed bumps and how not to do it. I don't think they're an exemplar. Um, okay, so, th so that brings us to the governor of Nevada. Uh, Steve Sislak uh, made his um, off-year state of the state um, at an empty football stadium, which ironically was the same thing that Gavin Newsom had done in an empty football stadium uh, shortly before that. Um, he talked about not raising taxes this year, which is fine because there isn't a session of uh, the legislature this year, but now he's promising not to raise taxes uh, in, in next term if he's reelected. Um, what do you think the appetite would be for raising taxes? Right now, none. But you can't say never. I don't think never is gonna work either. It, you know, our, our situation is fluid, as you say. We've had 11 or 12 months of gaming win over a billion dollars. That's extraordinary. You know, that, that is an amazing thing. There has been this giant influx of federal money. I don't think we've spent all of that yet. I'm pretty sure that we have not. Well, that, well okay, so let's talk about that because <laughs> not only is it coming into Nevada, um, and it's uh, continuing to pour in. Uh, new money is being found for all kinds of projects within the state, which in one way is great news. I mean, you know, there's lots of things that we could utilize the money for, and you know, the legislature and the governor are looking at all these different things. But at the same time, if you're trying to cut back on things that are inflationary, is this really the right time to be pouring tons of money into the country in Nevada? No, except the money is out there and allocated now. We have, the money is basically in our checking account. If they spend it wisely and they spend it on one shots, they don't spend it on an ongoing budgetary item that they then have to come back and backfill in two years or four years, then there are things that can be done. For example? Um, they could do road maintenance. We have, you know, in. You know that my husband and I travel a lot in our motorhome, so we're very conscious of road conditions. Nevada has really excellent roads. We are, we are gifted with a transportation department that does a phenomenal job. 
Yeah, no argument there. And I think that the RTCs um, in both ends of the state um, have done a terrific job uh, with getting to pass the tax increases on gasoline that have allowed them to do, you know, not only repairs, but pushing things off into the future as well. The indexing. Yes. Yes. So, so I mean, we might cry a little at the pump, but I mean, in, in, in terms of the quality of the roads, vastly improved over some of the other areas of the state that we could talk about that I won't, that uh, <laughs> um, uh, are very shy about raising taxes uh, uh, for road maintenance. I live in one of those counties. I, I didn't want to bring that up, but uh, <laughs> uh, yes, you do. I do. <laughs> I, I don't buy my gas there, though. I buy my gas in Carson City very deliberately because that is they, they have that additional tax and they put it to the roads. So I very carefully started buying gas in Carson City when we moved there because they, they were still planning the Carson City bypass. That's, that saves me 15 minutes every day I go to Reno each way. It's an extraordinary savings. And, and a long time coming. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about the stock market. <sighs> okay. So, I mean, it's been on this boom for such a long time. Mm -hmm. um, the Fed wants to raise uh, the interest rates. Today. Well, today as we tape. As we tape this right. on the 16th. Um, where do you see this going and how is it going to affect the stock market, do you think? Um, I think that the market has already built in, and I think that's part of the reason that Jay Powell telegraphed what they were going to be doing, up to the point of including the actual percentage rate. He's going to do 25 basis points. I personally don't think that's enough. I don't think that's enough to dial back the inflation that we're seeing. Again, you know, we have an all of the above, and I have an all of the above energy strategy. I kind of had an all of the above financial strategy, too, that we need more than just the Fed. We need to be, a, as Americans, we need to be a little bit less anxious to buy everything that we see, guilty. But I think that that 25 percent or 25 basis points isn't going to be su sufficient. But the markets baked that in. You know, market came up yesterday, came up again this morning as I was leaving the house, you know, opened up. I don't think that it's not going to react badly to this to today's meeting. So, so that brings up the uh, the idea of day traders um, and private people doing this. Um, you saw companies like GameStop and yeah. AMC uh, being rescued by people that just said, "Hey, we love these companies and we want to put our money into them." Um, God bless them. <laughs> God bless them. At the same time, kind of risky, don't you 100%. think? Hundred percent. I don't trade in those things, but. But people do, and I think that they should be, you know, maybe applauded for that. It's a different kind of entrepreneurship. We have, we have been a nation of entrepreneurs pretty much from the get. I think it's a different sort of entrepreneurship, but it, it's definitely risky. But so is founding our country. <laughs> wow. Okay. So investing to founding a country. Well, but you're right. Yeah. We are, we are a nation of doers and thinkers and creators. And we always have been. And we always will be, I hope. I think that that spark lives in our hearts. And I hope we pass it on to our kids and grandkids and progeny, you know, millennia down the road. All right. Let's, let's go back um, for a minute here to talking about the Ukraine situation. Yeah. Because um, you know, I talked to Dina Titus last week, and in the conversation, I said to her, you know, people are talking about the potential for World War III. I think we're already in it. We just haven't advanced as far, uh, thankfully. Um, hopefully that continues by the time this airs um, into a worse situation. Mm -hmm. But you basically have the majority of the, of the world, with the exception of China and a couple of other countries, lined up against Russia. Mm -hmm. um, and um, China is now exercising an extraordinary role. They own so much of the United States debt that they can't really mess with the situation with the United States. They buy a ton of wheat and other products. They do a lot of trade with Ukraine and, uh, and with Russia. So suddenly now they become a key player. They are, in fact. Um, I would argue that they have been a key player for a while. If you look at their Belt and Road program, right. um, specifically in Africa, they own some really strategic places in Africa now because of defaults on debt. 
and you know they don't have the ability in the United States case to, to have that kind of foreclosure ability, but they sure have a long arm in the rest of the world. All right, so, so do you think that uh, the, the end of the hostilities in Ukraine will depend more on what China says and does rather than the United States and NATO? That's a really good question. <laughs> and then maybe one to take a commercial break on. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hello, is this D&D roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you. But we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Before the masks, before the distancing, before the world changed, UMC was ready. Our response to COVID-19 began before the crisis did with our own team of infectious disease experts who've spent their careers planning for this moment. With a pandemic response plan, we would practiced again and again. And by blazing new trails and large-scale testing, including every patient we admit. Always ready. UMC. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. I'm men's rights attorney, Marilyn York. And because I represent men in all family law matters, women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Cheryl Blomstrom. She is a political consultant and financial expert here on the program. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll get you off the hook here and change the topics to cryptocurrency. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's amazing to me um, how cryptocurrency has taken off. Um, the cost of it at times is extraordinarily high. Um, but more and more uh, places of business are looking to accept cryptocurrency as payment. Your thoughts? I will not be one of those people. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot wrap my arms around that idea. I understand generally how blockchain works, but I don't understand why cryptocurrency works. You know, you can just create something out of magical thin air and unicorn smiles, and you have a currency. I don't understand it well enough. I literally don't think I would be engaged in it and don't think that um, it's my thing at all. My mother um, was a very conservative person financially, mm -hmm. and she never got over the fact that uh, we'd gotten off the gold standard right. in terms of backing currency. So the concept of cryptocurrency, I can hear her from the grave going, no, 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 not no, a good no, idea. No, 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 That's me. I'm feeling a little bit like a troglodyte, just based on, you know, I, I, I actually had that thought. So we went from gold standard to magical unicorn smiles. That's pretty awesome. People make money at it. Elon Musk makes money at it. And he's pretty brilliant in an interesting way. <laughs> All right. 
explain to me, if you can, what NFTs are. Because that, that's, <gasps> you know, a phrase, Sam. That, a phrase that we hear, but, but we're hearing it all the time no, you're now. you're right. And, and, you know, people um, are looking at um, things on a daily basis um, where they have cash because of all the money that's been pouring into the mm -hmm. economy over the last couple of years. Um, and they're looking to invest in things and suddenly they're reading about NFTs and what a great idea this is and seeing them in all kinds of different applications. And I'm sitting there scratching my head going, okay, I don't get this. I think NFTs are a digital representation of whatever, art or some asset, but it's just digital. It's in bits and bytes. It's not, you, you can't touch it, it's just there. And I, again, another thing, I am a Luddite. I don't understand why you would invest in a digital piece of something. It's not the actual artwork. You know, it's not Madonna's lovely little smile, or not Madonna, uh, Mona Lisa's little <laughs> smile, Madonna's smile either. But yeah, I don't understand why you would put money into that, but people do. You are right. I'm, I'm wondering if it's, if, you know, a fool's born every minute or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so step wisely. I think yes. I think yes. Uh, and talk to your financial advisor, and I'm pretty sure mine would say don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take another break. We'll be right back. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything, from wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Cheryl Blomstrom. She's a political consultant and financial expert. Um, it was interesting to read about Amazon uh, doing a 20 for 1 stock split the other day. Um, because the stock price has been so high for the individual investor, um, it's been like Berkshire Hathaway, not quite as high as that, but, but that, those kind of stocks. Right. Uh, what kind of good does that do for a company to lower the cost of their stocks that significantly? That's a great question. I think Amazon probably has a couple of a couple of pieces in their thinking. The first is broadening their base. You know, we've talked about taxes, broaden the base, lower the rate, kind of like that. But they also have, I think, a political component of that. When people are invested in you, they tend to support your ideas. And Amazon has had a couple of tough years. They've, they've made a lot of money. You know, they've done really well in their business model, but politically, they're having issues right now. Um, all of the big tech companies are. And so I wonder if broadening the base also broadens their potential support. You know what's interesting about that, and I don't disagree with you, um, is that, you know, we saw the breakup of the Bell system. Mm -hmm. And what you ended up with was eight companies that were became just as powerful as the Bell system and then ended up basically all getting go back together again. Exactly. So, so if you break it down, that doesn't mean to say that it goes away. It could come back even stronger. Mm -hmm. It may. The more things change, the more they stay the same. So, all right. So, so if you're, you know, final thoughts here. Um, as you sit here today, with all the tumult that's going on in the world, um, do you have confidence in the near-term future? Or are you concerned about the near-term future? Um, I am concerned, but I am optimistic. I am by nature an optimist. I am a glass half full or glass three quarters full kind of person almost all the time. Um, I believe in being grateful and I practice that and that means being optimistic. 
Well, I'm an optimist too. Um, I just get concerned for people in the short term that they may see their savings devolve. Short term is a scary place right now. That's a fact. Um, the other thing that I worry about globally is hunger with, you know, the number, are they five and six or four and five wheat producers, Russia and Ukraine? Right, huge. That, that impact is going to be felt across the globe in places where people can't sustain lack of calories. We, I don't have that problem. But I think there are people in the world who are going to die and are going to suffer, um, especially the smallest. We're gonna, we're gonna see some real suffering in the near term. And starting soon, a brand new world, politically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in November, probably. Yes, the, this is real. Boy, we could do we five could more do, shows on the dynamics of the politics of today. <laughs> All right, that's where we've got to leave it. Very Always good. a pleasure talking to Thank you. you. Thank Sam. you, Cheryl. It's been fun. And we'll be right back. Brian Culp of Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culp of Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. You can also check our archive going back to 2005 on our website. Again, nevadanewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.